Hello! Uh, a little while ago I released a video showing me flying my sim on an iPhone using an ELRS radio. Now this is pretty significant because previous to that you couldn't attach a radio to anything running iOS, be it an iPhone, an iPad or whatever, because Apple wouldn't let you. You could attach some joysticks like an Xbox controller or a PS4 controller, but that's, that's not the same stick feel you'd get as a proper radio. So by using Wi-Fi in the Express LRS module, we have a brilliant workaround. Now I've got to give a shout out here to the Velocidrone guys. Ashley and his team came up with the idea for putting Wi-Fi as a workaround for a joystick here, and they got it implemented uh, into Express LRS as well as uh, TBS for Tracer and um, Crossfire. So uh, big kudos to them because uh, it's a really novel idea and it really helps fix a problem many sim developers have because we couldn't figure out a workaround, but they did, so well done guys. So Express LRS 3.4 is out now, and this is the version you need to support this. And the new version of Sim has just dropped on the iOS App Store and the Google Play Store for Android, which puts this Wi-Fi joystick support in. So in this video, I just want to show you how to connect, um, what I would refer as best practices to get the best out of it, um, why my Sim doesn't currently work with Tracer and Crossfire, and as it came up a few times in the comments, why I didn't um, go on about this uh, in Android. It does support Android, but there's reasons why you might not want to use it. So let's go through that now. Okay, so here's my suggested way of doing things. Obviously, you will need your radio updated to ExpressRS 3.4. Welcome to HTX. And the way I would do things is go ahead and go to ExpressLRS and turn Wi-Fi connectivity on. Now, the way I'm running this one, I'm having it have its own uh, hotspot so you can join the network. Now, some of you may have already changed this so it joins your own network. That will still work, but I, I figure this is the best way. The reason because is uh, this works on like UDP and UDP packets just flood, flood, flood um, as much as possible. And if you've got a lot of other traffic on your network, it's possible that those packets may not all arrive or get congested with other traffic. But by having it on a private network, essentially, you're doing better. So on your phone or iPad, you want to go to your Wi-Fi settings and select Express LRS. Uh, I've logged into this before, so I, it should just log in automatically like that. Um, if not, I think the password is Express LRS, but it's on their website. After that, you can start the SIM. And what you want to do then is go to the radio and joystick setup. At the moment, it thinks we haven't got anything. So if we were to go and actually play the sim, we'd have uh, the normal touch controls, which is workable, but not as good. So in radio, what we want to do is say enable Wi-Fi joystick. There's just a tick box there, which is really hard to press in this. And it's say searching for Wi-Fi joystick. It'll take up to about five seconds because this thing is looking for a broadcast packet that happens every five seconds or so. Um, if we're now connected, you will notice it, it knows we're uh, a TX12. And if we move the six, we've got your normal movement there. We can also go ahead and change any switches. So I've got uh, all my switches to do something here. So this one is reset. So if I want, for example, a flip, which is that one I can just go in and change that I'm trying to do this in a camera lens which is not that easy so that should work I, I've deliberately limited this to eight channels uh, it will support up to 16 channels but because it's UDP and the packets are flowing as much as possible we already get in a situation where an iPhone can't keep up so sometimes a packet will come in and there's another one in the queue and at that time we have to throw away that original packet and get the new packet so in that way we've lost a little bit of resolution so if we then resume the sim and this is where it struggles a bit to get everything in let me put a stick overlay on so you can see what's going on so hopefully you can see that we can fly around quite happily too big it's too big to get the whole radio in and I'm trying not to get the radio too close to the camera else that uh, screws things up but yeah well that works pretty well and uh, aside from just playing the normal sim of course 
all the levels work so you can have fun chasing cars or planes in the valley or play with the buildings or just fly around the field or do whatever you want um, and it's all good it also works with quad ball the fun game which you would have found really hard with touch controls and it's all about flying into uh, balls and getting into the goal if you don't know much about the sim and, and why i created it it was kind of done as a a sort of help to new people um, and an attempt to sort of gamify helping you learn to fly whether it's chasing a ball around or chasing cars or planes or stuff like that the idea is it's not like you know a big racing sim and stuff like that it's designed to help you fly and hopefully have some fun doing it so that is ios and it should work on your phone an iphone or an ipad and be fine and if people are thinking well i can't imagine myself using a big radio with just a little phone uh, you could cast this to a tv if you wanted and have a better uh, and have a better experience that way and obviously if you've got an ipad it's a much bigger screen and you can play quite happily on there so moving over to android so with android if you want to use a wi-fi joystick it's the same thing you get your express lrs running wi-fi you go into your Wi-Fi settings and you connect it to Express LRS. Then you go ahead and start the SIM. Go into Radio Joystick Setup and go ahead and enable Wi-Fi Joystick. And it's found our TX12 again over here and you can see ourselves moving. So if we go and start up the sim, you should hopefully be able to see that we can fly around quite happily uh, using exactly the same thing. Now, two notes on Android. This came out, I think, a, a few years ago now, and originally there was very high-powered devices needed to use it. These days, aside from the fact that devices got more powerful, there, there are workarounds around it. If you're struggling to run something, then get your FPS counter up in the settings and have a look at the virtual resolution. By default, this goes to its, its native resolution, which is often gonna be much, much too much. If you drop it down a couple, you won't notice an awful uh, lot in terms of the quality but you will notice that your frame rate bumps up to 60 frames a second pretty easily. Uh, so check that out. I mean, there's obviously a limit to it. <laughs> it, it. It can look like an old Commodore 64 game if you whack it down all the way. But you can get now this running on moderate tablets or phones. Now, one thing I said about this is you might not want to run this on Android because this is the most inefficient way of actually... Uh, running the radio. I mean, it's a clever workaround and it's and that's why I went on about it for iOS. But in terms of what you might do on Android, there are better ways to do things. If we turn off the Wi-Fi joystick there and come out of this. Now, as far as Express LRS goes, you can actually run a Bluetooth joystick. You can't run a Bluetooth joystick on iOS because it won't connect properly. Uh, and to do that, we have to go back into the settings, go to Bluetooth, and connect to our paired device, or pair it if you haven't done already. If we then go into the sim and we see we're running the joystick, we get um, a Bluetooth joystick available called ELRS joystick. And again, this works fine, although that pitch needs reversing. Everything's slightly different on um, Bluetooth like the switches have suddenly changed position they are right the way down here now for some reason on channel 13 but that's the way it goes and Bluetooth would be faster than Wi-Fi but not as fast as putting a cable in and because Android lets you do that if I just come out of that joystick so if we now connect a cable into there and we put one in here we go to joystick mode we should see that we have an OpenTX Radio Master and that 
<laughs> and he's calibrating. But that is the very fastest way of doing stuff. Let me just remap the controls quick so we know it works. Oh, better. All our controls are working. So that's the reason I don't go on about Android. Android you can connect a cable to, that will get the very best experience. You could use Bluetooth, that's not as good, and you could use Wi-Fi, which is not as good again. Um, if you actually notice it, that's dependent on you. I haven't noticed any problems when doing a direct connection using the radio as the Wi-Fi hotspot. That works very well and I, I don't see anything, but you could potentially get something depending on the way the packets worked on the rest of your network. So why doesn't this work with Crossfire and Tracer? Well, I wish I could tell you. If I um, put this in Wi-Fi mode in Express LRS and connect to it on my desktop and then use Wireshark, which I use quite a lot through the development, you will see that every five seconds we get a broadcast packet from the radio uh, which gives us some information. Uh, specifically, we get a port number, we get an IP address, and we can carry on communicating to establish the connection and start the Wi-Fi joystick protocol going. Now, if I do the same thing with my TBS Crossfire module, and I've updated to the latest beta firmware, which includes this, um, I connect this to my desktop, I look at Wireshark, and I get absolutely nothing coming from it. Um, if I take away just looking for that address, and this is the address of the radio, there's a bunch of communications going on, mainly from my host computer, which is the 4.100 address, uh, asking various questions and broadcasting, but there's nothing coming from the radio, and it's the same as Tracer. So either I'm doing something fundamentally wrong, um, or it's not quite working as it was described to me. But uh, hopefully, uh, if I figure out the problem, or there is a problem, that should be an easy one to fix in later versions. But for now, I thought, let's get the Express LRS version out because lots of people are using that uh, and that fixes a big hole in the support for iOS. As said, the updates have dropped now, so if you've got the current version, it should update. It is the same version number, so it doesn't go out of sync with the desktop version. And I'm specifically and very deliberately not putting Wi-Fi joystick support into the desktop version because I think it would be a stupid idea to do with all the better ways you've got of connecting. Uh, if you haven't tried it, try it out. It's on the uh, Play Store, it's on the iOS App Store, you'll be able to find it and give it a try and see what you think. There's one more small area of business which I meant to do about a year ago, <laughs> um, which involves the composer of the music that was in the game. It's mostly in Quadball, the little game and the, the title music. It was composed by a guy called Aerovision, who very kindly did all this work for free for me. Um, and he asked if he could have his soundtrack available. So I did put it on Steam some time ago, but and I and I said, oh, next time I do an update, I'll, I'll mention it to people. And of course, I haven't done an update. We've still got one, at least one big update to go in, which I still haven't quite finished. Um, but that is uh, the soundtrack. The soundtrack is on Steam. If you like the music, um, by all means, go and get the soundtrack. All proceeds there will go directly to Aerovision and not come by me at all. He, he'll, he'll get all the money for that one, if you appreciate that music. That is all from me for now. There will be more Sim coming, um, although I'm mainly focusing on a, a different game I'm developing at the moment. There is a different channel if you want to see my journey to developing that one. Uh, linky up here and uh, down below in the description. Anyway, hope that uh, is helpful today and I hope you guys on iOS enjoy playing with an actual radio because it's much much better than trying to use your fingers. Not so much if you're just on the move and you want to have a quick a quick sim around. That's, that's when it's going to look a bit weird to use a radio. Anyway, I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.